Hey everybody, what's up? It's Nick here. And in today's video, we're going to give you guys a basic introduction to movement or animating different objects within Adobe After Effects. So this comes to us as a question from a friend of a friend of mine's. Her name is Victoria and she says, Hi, I'm Ryan. Fr I'm Hi, I'm Ryan's friend Victoria, the one that needs help with After Effects. I know how to import files from Photoshop into After Effects, but how to go about animating them is completely lost on me. Do you know how to go about it? Well, yes, I do. So I'm going to give you guys a basic introduction to how to make different layers of a Photoshop document or any layers in a basic After Effects project animate. I'm going to show you guys the basics of where all of the controls are and all the different tricks to make it look nice. So I have a Photoshop document right here, which I just titled example thingy.psd. And if we open that up, as you can see, it's basically just a black rectangle, my logo and a mouse pointer. Nothing fancy. I just wanted something basic to show you guys this tutorial. So I'm going to import these into After Effects. I'm just going to drag it in. And since this is a Photoshop document, it'll ask us how to import it. So I just want to import this as a basic composition. And I want to make sure the editable layer styles are selected. And I'm going to click OK. And then as you can see here, it imported as a composition Excel. And then it has the different media down here, which are all of the different layers of our Photoshop project. So the different layers include my logo, the black rectangle, and the large mouse pointer. So I'm just going to open open up the composition for the time being. And as you can see here, here are all of the different things from my Photoshop document, and they've imported automatically as the bottom three layers. And we can hide them by clicking on these little eyeballs right here. So this will let us see what's going on. And if we want to lock anything in the background, we can check this lock button. And as you can see, once the lock button is checked, we can't move anything over here. So I just wanted to make that aware for you guys and now we're actually going to start animating these objects around so first I'm just going to check the settings of my composition as you can see these are the composition settings you can change these any way you want to just in case they didn't import the way that you thought that they would but now that we have all of the basics out of the way I'm going to just create a background image so I can have a nice background to see what I'm doing so I'm just going to generate a new solid for right now and I'm going to give it kind of a little different background. So I'm just going to generate a ramp and that actually acts as a gradient. And I'm just doing this so that we have a little bit of a nicer background to work with. So let's see that that doesn't. Okay, that's that's good. That's good enough. So I'm going to drag this just to the background and I'm going to lock it. And that's just going to be the background for this. So now let's actually go around with animating some of these images. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the the white orb and the large mouse pointer and we're going to focus just on the rectangle. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make the rectangle start from off screen and then just zoom on screen like this. So I'm going to click this little arrow on the rectangle layer to collapse it. And as you can see, we have two things here, one for mask and one for transform. If we expand transform, as you can see, we have these different options for anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. The anchor point will essentially change this point to where the center of it is, and that'll actually help when you're moving some things around, but you won't really have to use that if you're just doing basic level animation position, if we can drag these things around, the position will actually move where the thing is on the screen. And that's a lot easier than just dragging it around and hoping that you actually have it in the right position. Scale will, of course, make it bigger or smaller. Rotation will just rotate it like this. And then also opacity will drop it down and make it transparent. As you can see, this is already at 72 because that is a feature that's carried over from the Photoshop document because I made that have a 72% opacity within Photoshop. And also, you're not limited to all of these different options right here. You can also go around making these 3D. You can actually animate them within 3D space. And in order to do that, you simply need to go to these three little boxes right here. And if you check mark this box right here, here, as you can see, we now have different things for X, Y, and Z rotation, and that'll actually make it rotate and change on a 3D axis. So in case you want to do some fancy 3D tilting or 3D animation, those options are there, and you just have to make sure they're selected as a 3D layer. But for now, we're going to be working with 2D because it's a lot more simple. So the first thing that I'm going to do to make it zoom in is I'm going to start at the beginning of my project right here, and I'm going to drag the position bar all the way off of the screen just so that we can't see it anymore. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it 
to where I want it to appear on screen. And then I'm going to click the little stopwatch right here. And what that'll do is that, hold on. What that'll do is that'll add in a keyframe to our project right here. So as you can see, we have this little keyframe right here. And then if I go onto the keyframe at the exact position and I drag the position bar back to where I want it to be. So around there, that's good. And as you can see, nothing happened. <laughs> That's because I forgot to add a keyframe at the beginning. So I'm just going to click this little box right here to add a keyframe to the beginning. And I'm going to drag it off to the side. And as you can see, whenever we're working with keyframes, this little line will show the motion that's going to take place. So just, to, just in case I threw any of you guys off, this keyframe right here starts at the very beginning. And then this keyframe right here makes it go into the middle. So if we start at this keyframe and we go forward, as you can see, it moves onto the screen. And that's essentially all that I wanted to do. And now what we're going to do is we're going to carry that thing over. We're going to carry this different method of thinking over to some of the other layers. So I want to make the white orb just bounce up from the middle of the screen when this rectangle gets fully in frame. So I'm going to move my cursor over a few different frames. And now I'm going to expand the white orb, go to transform. And then I'm going to choose the scale stopwatch. And then we're also going to move it over like this and add in another keyframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first keyframe right here. And we're going to make sure we actually have the layer visible. And I'm going to make the scale of this zero. So this keyframe is set at zero and this one's set at a hundred. And as you can see here, as we move between keyframes, it will zoom into the screen. So the first thing that we have, as you can see, it moves in and then it zooms up. Quite simple. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move this keyframe in a little closer to make the action take a lot less time. So as you can see, it appeared much, much faster. And the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the large mouse pointer come in from the bottom of the screen and I'm going to make it click on my logo. So I'm going to make sure that's visible once again. And we're going to have it appear right around here. And we are going to actually make this a 3D layer because I want to do some 3D animation on this. So let's change the scale of this. And I haven't added in a keyframe yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it off screen a little bit. And now I'm going to add a position keyframe. And then we're just going to move it up. And I'm going to add another position keyframe. And we're going to, uh, that's a scale keyframe. My bad. I'm going to move it up a little bit right here. And that's, uh, that's a scale keyframe too. I need to actually click on the right one. And, okay, that's a good position. So as you can see, it moves up. And then what we want to do is we want to add in some, I believe it's Y or Z orientation. I don't know. Let's check. Yeah, we want to add in an X orientation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an X rotation keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward and I'm going to add in another one and I'm just going to make it click in. So as you can see, we moved up and then it clicks in. And then I'm going to add in another one to make that X rotation back to zero. So as you can see, this is what we have happening. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click the RAM preview button, which will show it all how it's actually going to appear when you finally render the project. So I'm going to click this. And now as you can see, that's what we have. It zooms in and clicks. And that's essentially the basics of how to animate. So that's dealing with keyframes. So if you use these different keyframe layers and you make it move to according to the different orientations, that's how you basically do the animation. Now, there are some different things you can do to polish this up. For example, if I select a keyframe and I right click on it and I go down to this that says keyframe assistant, as you can see, you can choose easy ease, easy ease in or easy ease out. And that will essentially just make it look a little bit smoother and it'll just ease in and make it lo not look so much of a rough animation. Because as you can see right here, that's kind of just a rough basic animation. So the hot key for that, actually, if we just go, no. The hotkey for that, if we just go back, is F9. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these keyframes, and I'm going to click F9. And as you can see, it changed them to look like this little hourglass shape. And then as you can see, if we just if I ran preview that back, take a look at the mouse pointer. As you can see, it looked a little bit not as rough. It looked a little bit easier, easy ease. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the white orb, 
we're gonna, we're gonna press the same hotkey, and I'm gonna do the same for the rectangle. And then as you can see, they all ease in. So let's just RAM preview it once again. And then as you can see, it eased in and it didn't look so rough. Now, there's one more thing you can do to make this look a little bit better, and that's turn on motion blur, which will add kind of a realistic blur to it while it's in motion, and that'll make it look a little, a lot less rough and a little bit more realistic for moving around, and it's just overall more pleasing to the eye. So to turn on motion blur, you need to make sure you have it enabled for the entire composition. So you click on this little button right here that says enable motion blur, and that will enable the motion blur process in for the entire project. Now, if you start to have your computer slow down while you're working on your project, you can just disable motion blur for the time being, and then when you actually want to export your project, make sure you have it enabled. But once you have motion blur enabled, you want to then enable it for your different individual layers, which if we go down here, right next to where the enable 3D layer box is, there's this one right here that corresponds to the motion blur. So we're going to check mark that for all three of our layers, and now we've given all of our animated layers motion blur. So if we RAM preview it once again, as you can see it kind of blurs when we move in. It takes a little bit more time to render, but once that's completely done, we should get something that looks like this. As you can see, that looks a lot better than what we originally started out with. Now. What I did here was essentially just the bare basics of animation, but you can go forward and do a whole lot more with this and make your animations look a lot more complex, and you can make some really good promos or some motion graphics out of this. Now, one more thing that I thought that I should show you is that if you ever want to make it so that one layer's animation corresponds with another layer's animation, you can parent that layer to another. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the white orb and the large mouse pointer, and I'm going to drag in another instance of the large mouse pointer. So this is large mouse pointer number two, and I'm going to make it aqua. So this large mouse pointer, we want to make move with the exact same animation as the black bar. So what I'm going to do is let's just move it into the middle and I'll enable motion blur for that too. And then we can drag this, which is a parent layer. And if we drag this to the rectangle, now we've essentially parented the mouse pointer to the rectangle. And now when I play it back, as you can see, the mouse pointer moves with exactly the same motion as the rectangle and that is parenting and that's a really useful if you want to like track text to some other things and I use that a lot for my lower thirds in the bottoms of my videos and so I think that's essentially it I kind of feel like I'm forgetting something but uh, I don't know It'll come to me eventually, but that's essentially it with the parenting. So that is it. That's the basics of using the animation within Adobe After Effects. So I hope this answered your question, Victoria, and I'll be happy to help if you have any more questions, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.